Welcome everyone. Today I want to actually have a guest on the channel, Sarah, my wife, who is going to talk about monitor calibration. She is super awesome. But before we do that, if you are a subscriber to our channel, you've probably noticed that we haven't posted new content in a couple weeks. And that's because of this, our brand new awesome video studio. So this has been a long time coming. If you're a long time subscriber of the channel, you know we started with a green screen and then we had a gray seamless backdrop. Now we have this beautiful little fake living room scene in our video studio. So I'm glad you're here. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And then lastly, I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah, who is gonna talk all about monitor calibration and how important it is in your workflow. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, so today I wanna to talk to you guys about monitor calibration, like Forrest mentioned. And monitor calibration is a very important part of your workflow because it will help you maintain accurate color on the screen that you're editing on. Uh, we all wanna make sure that the photos that we produce are actually accurate to what we want them to look like. So the first step of that is making sure that the screen we're editing on is accurately displaying colors. So we can make sure of that with one of these tools. So this is a monitor calibration tool, and there's a couple different brands that make them. The two main brands are X-Ray and Data, Data Color. Um, and this one is the Spider 5 Pro by Data Color, and this is the one that I'm gonna show you guys on. But they all basically work the same way. So if you understand this tutorial, you should be pretty golden to go work with your color monkey and it works just fine for you too. So this guy is really awesome because it'll make sure that, uh, it's basically a sensor actually, that will read the colors on your screen as they are being displayed and it'll make sure that it's displaying them accurately. So we're gonna launch into uh, my lovely desk over here and talk about this device. All right guys, so now we're actually gonna look at how to use the software that the hockey puck comes with. So uh, what we wanna do is actually set a few settings first before we launch into the actual software. So the first thing you wanna do before you start using it is make sure that you've given your computer time to warm up before you actually start calibrating. And usually about half an hour is good. The reason for that is because you wanna make sure that the uh, heat of the computer doesn't change the way that the colors are displaying. So by giving it about half an hour to heat up, you make sure that it stays the same. Um, also, you wanna make sure that uh, you set your brightness level of your computer screen to be uh, around 50%. That's my recommendation. The reason for that is uh, it's not so bright that you think your photos are all overexposed and it's not so dark that you think they're underexposed. And it's also really just important to try to maintain a normal level of brightness so that all of your photos you're looking at under a reasonable level of brightness. And also, uh, you wanna make sure that your screen doesn't change itself while you're working or while you're calibrating. So it's important to turn off any auto brightness dimming functions. Uh, normally they're found in like power saving options or energy saving options, and they're theoretically great, but we don't want them here because we want all of our brightness to stay the same all the time uh, so that we're looking at our uh, photos accurately. So in order to start using this software, when you open the Spider 5 Pro software, it actually starts by giving you this like four things that you wanna check before you move forward with calibration. And those four things are actually some of the things I've talked about. So the first one is, have you let your display warm up? Great, we already discussed that, make sure you do that. Lighting conditions is the next one, and this is one I haven't touched on yet, but it's important to make sure that there's no uh, direct light falling on your screen. So if you're sitting with your back against a window, it's probably not the best place to calibrate your monitor. Um, however, I would say if that's your normal place to edit your pictures, you probably would wanna calibrate your monitor there. Uh, you always wanna be in the location where you're gonna do most of your editing, uh, but try to prevent any intense light falling on it. Also, try to maintain a, a daylight balanced workflow or uh, more environment when you're editing your pictures because any colors that are not neutral are going to alter the way that your eyes see color. So, 
check your lighting conditions, check your environment. Next, just check your display controls. Make sure that you're actually uh, making your making sure that your brightness isn't changing and that your uh, brightness is at the right level. So then it will actually remind you to plug it in. So I'm gonna grab mine out of this handy dandy drawer here and we're gonna get this thing plugged in and ready to go. Uh, this one has actually little tidbit. It's very nice to keep this thing happy. And the way that you keep it happy is by treating it nicely. And these cord wraps are awesome. So if you uh, are just kind of shoving this thing in your bag or wherever it goes in your desk, try to get one of these little Velcro things. You can get them at Home Depot. And it keeps the cord really nice so that you don't uh, end up crimping it and having to get a new tool. Because that would be a dumb reason to have to get a new tool. No one wants to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And then I've got this little guy on the end. Um, every monitor calibrator that you get usually has a cover for the sensor. So uh, another thing that I'm gonna touch on in a minute is how to uncover this guy. But first, let's keep going with our software. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And once I hit next, it's gonna walk me through a couple of settings I get to choose. So first, are we working with a desktop or a laptop? I'm gonna choose laptop, because that's what I'm working with. And next, it's going to ask me, what type of laptop is this? And this is important to tell the software because it's going to kick out a profile at the end, which is basically just a set of instructions for the computer monitor. And what it's going to do is it's going to name that profile with the name of your laptop. Super important to make it accurate. So go ahead and make sure that's accurate. If you're on an Apple machine, normally it will default to color LCD. I would get rid of that and call it like MacBook Pro or MacBook Air or whatever it is um, because it's really good to be accurate when you come across your list of profiles. So set that and then click next. Slowly but surely it will get there. And then the next thing, uh, if you have calibrated before, you'll have three options. If you have not, you'll only have one. So I have three. I have recalibrate, check your calibration, and do a full calibration of my display. What I want to do for right now is I want to do a full cal, but I want to change the settings so you guys can see what I actually choose. So I'm going to go to change settings. And what it's going to do, if this is your first time calibrating, you'll automatically see this screen. And what it does is these are the settings that you get to determine uh, in order to uh, basically control how the software is going to uh, check your screen. And the first one I want to recommend is, um, or actually in general, this is why this software is awesome. It goes by the industry standards for photography. So all of the recommended options are actually the same ones that I recommend, which is great. Um, so your gamma, you want to set to 2.2, which is roughly the contrast ratio of your screen. How bright is the brightest thing? How dark is the darkest thing? Your white point, that's essentially color temperature. So what color white is your white? Is it a bluish white, a orangish white? And 6,500 Kelvin is the right recommendation that I would recommend for you guys. Uh, next thing, uh, brightness is something that you can actually set while you're in the middle of calibration. So you have the option here to set, do you want to adjust it in the middle of calibration or do you want to not adjust? I set mine to do not adjust because I already set it before I open the software, just like I mentioned. Make sure you set it to about 50% and then keep it there. So I set mine to do not adjust. And then room light, I set that off. But one thing that you can do with these uh, sensors is they can read the ambient light in your room. And it will basically take that into account when it cal calibrates your screen. I don't do that because often I move my self a lot when I'm editing. I like to edit on my couch or on my counter or on my table and I don't always sit in the exact same spot. So that's not as useful for me. However, you could leave it on if you always edit in the exact same position. So actually the recommended uh, settings are the ones that I recommend for you guys and that's why. So once you set these guys, you should be able to go ahead and hit next. And what it's going to do is it's going to ask you to place your funny little hockey puck right here on the screen. And this is what I want to show you guys up here, uh, how to take this guy apart and use it. So this thing, it actually just pulls apart like this. You split it in half. I'm going to show the camera that. Um, you split it in half. And this split uh, actually uncovers the sensor. So the little honeycomb thing that you see on the inside, you don't want to touch that. That's actually the sensor that reads the colors on your screen. And what you can do is actually slide the plastic piece down the cord a little bit, and that acts as a weight on the other side of your screen to hold the sensor flush. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide that thing down, and we're going to lay it on our screen, and that weight in the back is going to help make sure it stays flush. 
Also, I'm tilting my screen back a little bit because one thing that's super duper important when you're calibrating is that this actually does stay flush. Um, if it doesn't, you're actually getting some room light that comes in the side and the sensor's viewing that when it makes its calculation, which is not good. So we're gonna just arrange this on the screen right where that little uh, icon is to fit your sensor there. And it's so handy that they do that. It's like a chalk outline. Um, then go ahead and hit next. So now, after you hit next, it's going to actually flash a bunch of colors up on your screen. It's gonna do white, black, red, green, every single color you can think of. And what the sensor is gonna do is read how that color looks on your particular screen. And if it's off from the industry standard, it's going to write that into the profile, which is the set of instructions that will make the monitor display colors accurately from here on out. So this is gonna take a little bit. It's gonna walk through, it takes you know roughly between two and five minutes, um, and I'm gonna let that run for a second. Okay, so now guys, when it finishes on the screen, it's gonna say measuring completed, and it's gonna say you can remove your tool now. Uh, so I always unplug my tool here. Uh, you don't have to eject it or anything. You just straight up unplug the USB port and then you take off your sensor. And it's really important at this point to slide that little cover back down and flip it back over your sensor to protect it. And then you can wind up your cord and put it away. Then you click finish on the screen and that will get back to the normal software window. And in this window, it's gonna give me the option to save my profile. So again, it just wrote a set of instructions that will make sure that the colors on the screen are being displayed accurately. Okay, so once you get to this screen and you're ready to save your profile, there's one thing that I would recommend adding in at the end of the name of the profile. And that is, I wanna make sure that you guys add in today's date. So I'm gonna put in 2018-06-25. And the reason for that is if I ever have a profile that's not displaying colors, correctly, I can go back to a previous profile, but I wouldn't know which one was older without the date. So I always like to name mine. Also, it helps me know how frequently I've calibrated and the frequency of your calibration is important. So you can actually set a reminder right here for how often you want to uh, recalibrate. I recommend at least once a month. You could do it every two weeks if you want to be extra careful. Uh, but the reason for this is that your colors actually do shift over time and your monitor will not hold calibration as well. The more expensive and nicer monitor you buy, the better it holds calibration, but laptops are notoriously horrible at it. So you wanna make sure that you set that reminder and you don't just dismiss it every time. You wanna make sure to actually recalibrate. So I'm gonna save my profile and this profile will go into a whole bank of other profiles and that set of instructions will now be used to display colors on my screen. So then I can hit next and it will show me a before and after, which is really cool. So you can actually hit this switch button and it will show you before you calibrated versus after you calibrated. And you can see before, it's not that huge of a difference for mine, but you can really see it on this color checker side over here everything got a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more uh, actually uh, colorful, I guess, which is nice because then I know that my colors are actually accurate to what they are in real life. So once you've checked and you see that it's like looking really cool now, you can go ahead and hit next. And this is really awesome. So if you really want to get into the details of it, you can see how your profile of your screen compares to normal color spaces. So the most common color space that is used in the world is sRGB. You can see how well your screen displays sRGB colors. Or you can compare it to Adobe RGB, which is a little bit larger, see how well your screen does of that. So my screen only displays about 75% of the colors that are in the Adobe RGB color space, but if you buy a better monitor, like I mentioned, you can get uh, more colors visible on your screen, which is really cool. So. That's just a handy little tool, not super necessary. And then you can just go ahead and hit quit. Okay, so that's the end of the calibrating process. Um, it's a very easy process, which is why it's super easy to do it once a month, which again is very, very recommended to make sure that your colors are displaying accurately all the time. So these tools are really awesome. They only cost about you know 150 bucks on average, uh, depends on which one you buy. And this one you can find with a link in the description. 
And again, they all basically do the same thing. Uh, I recommend staying within the $100 to $200 range because you don't need anything much fancier than that. And the ones that are a little bit less than $100, I've had way too many issues with them. Um, sometimes students will bring them and they actually just straight up don't work. Or they give you wrong colors, which is not good. So I recommend in that middle range. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you have any questions, Sarah will answer them down in the comments section down below. And lastly, hit that subscribe button in the corner for more awesome videos like this one. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.